Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and today I'm starting a new project which is the Diamonds and Bars Twill Rug from the March-April 2019 edition of Handwoven Magazine. So here is a picture of the rug and the rug as written is uh, about 19 inches wide by 31 inches long. Now the space that I want to put this rug is my entryway, so I'd like a rug that is bigger than that. I'd like it to be about 31 inches wide by 47 inches long. So I thought what I would do is show you how I figure up how much warp and weft I need and how long the warp needs to be for a different size from what the pattern calls for. So let's get started. So since this is a published draft, um, I don't feel comfortable showing you the details of the threading or the treadling. Uh, but if you go to the Handwoven Magazine website, you will be able to see this information without subscribing to their magazine. So we have the structure, which is bound weave. We have the equipment needed. Um, and then we have the warp and the weft uh, yarns that are required. The warp length, how many ends, the floating salvage, the take up, loom waste, the uh, ends per inch, the picks per inch. Then we have our width in the reed, our woven length measured under tension on the loom, and our finish size once we have it off the loom. So with this information, uh, I can get about 90% to getting the final numbers from what I need. What I do need are the number of repeats in the threading and the number of threads in the repeat, in each repeat. I also need to know how many repeats of the treadling and if there are any uh, hem allowance, um, header allowance, or balancing threads for the pattern. So I would need those for the final calculations. So let's take the information that we have and start calculating. So to find the new finished width, I take the original pattern and I find the number of repeats in the warp. Um, from my pattern that I've purchased a subscription to, I know that there are six repeats in the threading. The number of threads in each repeat are 18 and the number of balancing threads. So balancing threads are the threads on the beginning and the end of the of the project that balance out your repeats. Usually it's it's half a repeat or it might just be some selvage threads uh, that to before you actually start the repeats. So on this particular pattern, there are four threads at the beginning of the project, then there are 18 repeat, or I'm sorry, six repeats of 18 threads, and then there are five uh, ending threads outside of the repeat. So I have nine balancing threads. Then uh, my width in the reed, I know from my project information, is 19 and a half inches. I'm going to subtract off my finish width, which is 19 inches, and that's going to give me my draw in, which is a half an inch. Now, my desired width is, I'm going to say 32 inches. Um, now, my draw-in is still going to be half an inch, 
and so um, that gives me 32 and a half inches. Now I'm going to multiply that number times my ends per inch. So I know from my project information, my ends per inch is six. So if I take the 32 and a half times six, I get 195 inches or 195 threads. So that's the total number of threads that I need for this project. So then I take that 195 threads and I subtract off my balancing threads, which are nine. That's going to give me the number of repeats or the number of threads that I have available for my repeats, which is 186. Now I'm going to take the 186 and I'm going to divide it by the number of threads in each repeat, which is 18. Now that gives me 10.33 repeats. I want full repeats. So I'm going to either I'm going to either round my repeats up or I'm going to round my repeats down until I have a whole number. So my desired width was 32, but I would go a little bit lower than that. So let's go ahead and unround it down. So we're going to round down to 10. All right, so we have 10 repeats. So if we have 10 repeats, I'm going to multiply that times the number of threads in each repeat, which was 18. And that's going to give me 180 threads. I'm going to add back in my balancing threads, which were nine. And that's going to give me 189 threads. Now I'm going to take my total threads of 189 and I'm going to divide it by my ends per inch again, which is six. And this is going to give me my new width in my read, which is 31 and a half inches. My draw in is a half an inch, so I'm going to subtract that off. And that's going to give me my new width of 31 inches, which is kind of what I was thinking of in the first place. So we're good. Now let's move on to part B. is finding the new finished length of our rug. So first I'm going to take the number of repeats in my treadling of the original rug, which is 17. I know that my treadling uh, pattern has two inches allowance for a header on either end of the rug. So you could have the same uh, scenario of on in the warp as or in the weft as you do in the warp. So you have hem allowance, header allowance, um, or you could have threads for uh, balancing your pattern out, out. So you want to take those out of the equation. This particular pattern, we have two inches at the beginning and the end of our warp or of our weft. So we're going to say, we're just going to note four inches. Now we're going to take the original length of the rug under tension. 
and that's 33 inches. We're going to subtract out our allowance for the hems, headers, and border, or balancing, which is four inches. And we're going to divide the number of repeats, divide by the number of repeats in the original. So we have 29, and the number of repeats is 17. So let's see, that's 29. So we have 17 repeats in the original. So 29 divided by 17 is 1.70588. This is the number of, or I'm sorry, this is the length of each repeat in our weft. So now we're going to look at the length under tension. The length under tension from our pattern information is 33 inches. Our original finish length is 31 inches. We need to find the percentage difference between those two. So we take uh, 33 divided by 31 and we get about 106%. Now we're going to take that percentage, 106%, and we're going to multiply it by our desired length. So our desired length was 47 inches. And the desired length under tension then will be 49.8 inches. Now we're going to subtract off our uh, allowance for our hems, borders, and balancing. And we're going to uh, come up with 45.8 inches. Then we're going to divide that 45.8 by our length of each repeat of 1.70588. 1.70588. And this will give us the desired number of repeats. So 45.8 divided by 1.70588 is 26.8. 8 repeats. We want this to be an even number again. So since we have 26.8 inches, we're going to go ahead and round it up to 27. Now, we have 27 repeats in our new pattern length. We're going to multiply that by the length of each repeat, 1.70588. We're going to, and that comes up to uh, 46. Now we're going to add back in our hems, headers, and balance length of 4 inches. And that is going to give us our new length under tension, which is 50 inches. Now we're going to divide this 50 inches by the percentage of the difference we found in step three up here, which is 106%. Okay. And that will give us our final new length off the loom, which is 47.23 inches. So pretty close to 47 inches. At this point, we can take and figure our uh, warp requirements and our weft requirements of how much total yardage we need for each uh, using a standard method of calculating warp and weft. 
However, I have gone ahead and used the information provided in the original project information and what we've determined here to figure out what that warp and weft needs are going to be. So in order to figure out the warp yardage that we need, we're going to take first the new length on the loom, which is the length under tension, and that is uh, 50 inches. Then we're going to take the old length on the loom under tension, and that's 33 inches. Now we're going to divide 50 by 33 and come up with our increase in length which is 152%. Now we're going to figure out how long each warp thread needs to be. Our original warp is two yards. We're going to convert that to inches by uh, multiplying times 36. That gives us 72 inches. We're going to subtract off our loom waste because the loom waste is the same regardless of how long we make our project. So the loom waste in the project information is 32 inches. So this gives me 40 inches, which is how long the warp needs to be to make my 33 inch rug. So then I'm going to take and I am going to multiply this by the increase in the uh, length of our project. So we're going to multiply it times 152%. And this gives us uh, 60.8 inches. Okay, now you're going to add back in your loom waste. So your loom may not uh, use 32 inches as its loom waste. It may use more, it may use less. So I would put in no, I would put in 32 inches for my loom uh, because I want to have a little extra to uh, sample or maybe to experiment with different weave structures. Um, you can put in what your loom is if it's less or uh, if your loom waist is more than 32 inches, put that in. For our purposes, we're going to go ahead and put in 32 inches. That gives us uh, 92.8 inches. Okay. Now we're going to take 92.8 inches and we're going to convert that back into yards by dividing by 36 inches. And that's going to give us uh, 2.58 inches or 2.58 yards. Now, we want to um, either leave it at 2.58 yards, and that will give us a project with no extra. But if you want uh, some extra to maybe sample or try different weave structures, go ahead and round that up. I like to round it up to the next quarter yard. So we're going to say 2.75 yards. Now we're going to take the uh, total threads in the new draft that we figured up in the previous step, and we're going to, which is 189 threads, and we're going to add the floating selvages. This particular pattern calls for three floating selvages on each side, so that's a total of six floating selvages. Then we're going to take the total of those two numbers and multiply it times our new warp length, which was 2.75 yards. 
and that's going to give us 536.25 yards. So that's how much warp we need. Now we get to move on to the weft. The weft is a little more challenging because not only are we increasing the width, but we're also increasing the length. So now let's look at the weft yardage. So for this, we need to look at the new width in the reed, uh, which is 31.5 inches. And then we're going to look at the old width in the reed, which is 19.5 inches. We're going to divide 31 and a half by 19 and a half to come up with our percentage increased, which is 162%. Now we're going to add the length uh, the percentage length the in of the increase which in the previous step we figured out was 152 percent so now we're going to add those two together to give our total weft increase which is 314 percent but this 314 percent includes the original weft uh, that we have. So if we were to take the 314%, we would be double counting the original weft. So we need to subtract out 100% to come up with 214%. Now we're going to multiply this times the original weft yardage from our project information. This pattern uses uh, three different weft colors, two of which require uh, 265 yards, and one of them requires 300 and, oops, sorry, 375 yards. 375 yards. So if we take 265 times 214 percent, we come up with 567.1 yards and 375 yards times 214 percent is 802.5 802.5 yards. So the yard or the yarn that is called out for in the pattern is a 900 yard per pound yarn and it comes on one pound cones. So I know that I need to buy one cone each of these two colors. Of, well, I need to buy one one pound cone of each color and I'll have enough to do this project. The weft comes in uh, 560 yard, yards per pound, and it is sold by um, the pound. So uh, Halcyon sells by the pound, and so you may get a cone that has a little more than a pound on it or a little less than a pound. So what I did is I called them directly and I let them know that I needed um, a certain yardage, which equaled out to like 1.05 pounds. And uh, they were able to find me a cone that had a little over that on it. And so that's what I was able to purchase. If I hadn't been able to do that, uh, I would have either had to buy a mini cone at a higher uh, cost per, per yard or made my uh, project possibly narrower or uh, shorter to, so that I didn't have to buy a whole pound of yarn 
to get 30 yards out of it. So. so this is a helpful exercise to go through when you are increasing the length and or the width of your project. This method works uh, for pretty much any project um, with some changes that you need to account for if you're doing, so let's say you're doing a um, towels and you're wanting to make them wider uh, you need to accommodate for how many towels uh, are in each um, are in the in the total work so i hope that you found this information useful and i hope that you can follow along as i uh, work this project and get it on the loom and weave it uh, it should be a pretty cool rug when it's finished so in the meantime um, you can subscribe to my channel to get notification when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving!